Good morning, Melanie and Patricia. Good morning. Your hair looks fabulous. I love it. <laughs> I don't have wild hair, so I absolutely love it. I crimped it. I use my crimper and I like it when it's big and crazy because that's just, I, I have to actually work for that. <laughs> Do you use like the big wave crimp, crimper? Yeah, that like three barrel one that you go. <laughs> yes, I love, I love it. I use mine all the time. Yeah, I don't use one really enough. Good. I usually curl it, but I do every once in a while. I get in the mood to have crimpy, kind of fuzzy. Look. It looks so good. Cute. My mom, my How mom. Was your trip? My trip was good. It was just a quick little trip to go check it out and scope out our Super Bowl spot. We've been going for the last few years there. And um, yeah. So fun. Yeah, That's it's awesome. a easy trip for us. So it was good. Kind of trying to find um hello jennifer hey jennifer Hi. trying to find our graphics from when we did that series that video series on telling your story and i had all those question prompts I'm trying to find where those i saw the graphics the other day on my facebook memories but once those memories are gone it's like where did they all go i don't know there they are. Oh, perfect. Um, do not start playing. Okay, I'll use these in a second. Cool. All right, nine o'clock. Here we go. Leslie, we'll see people jumping on pretty quickly. Patricia, you are friends with, um, I'm going blank. Green. Corrine. Corrine. I said Colleen. Yeah, Corrine. Very good. I was trying to remember. I thought you were the one that she recommended or referred our way. Yes, definitely. She was just saying, she told me, you have to join the group. They're amazing and awesome. told me all about you. And I've been doing Brian Buffini for a long time. Um, but this is great just to have this because we do tend to forget the things that are really important. And yeah. so it's, it's helping me get back on track. So. Perfect. Well, that's why we realized early on in this, we had to meet every single week because um, every week we kind of get off track and we have yes. to realign ourselves and refocus really quickly together. So that's what, that's what this is all about. Um, but this week, every third week of the month will be our mastermind discussion week. So we will have um, a topic which this month was mindset and discipline. So you saw this several times. If you can see my screen right here, mindset and discipline was for January. Mm -hmm. We thought it was a great theme to kind of kick off the month, right? The year. And then we'll always have a podcast. Last year, we had a podcast discussion every single um, you know, month. This time, that's just going to kind of support the theme of the month. So if you listen to the uh, 10 Vows of the Rich, episode 184, also another great one if you haven't listened to that yet and you'll you know you'll go back and listen another really 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 great podcast that i talk about a lot so i think that's why we tried to pick a different one um is uh, the mind the power of a mind made up and that's episode 25 so it goes way back in brian's um podcast i listened to it again this morning but it's one of my favorite ones because it's just such a simple concept of I made up my mind, right? And mm -hmm. I know a lot of us women on here, once we make up our mind about something, there's really not much that can stop us, right? Um, expect, like, you know, when you wanna move a bed across the room, like you can do it by yourself, but then, you know, when we need help with the groceries, we're like yelling, saying like, get out here and help us. <laughs> um, so we, uh, the power of a mind made up is such a simple concept and we've heard it before that, hey, if you didn't get it done, if you didn't meet that goal, if you didn't um, do the things that you needed to get done, well, obviously it wasn't a priority, right? And usually that stings a little because it's so true. Um, if you didn't make up your mind, if you didn't set the disciplines in place, it's just not going to happen. And then that means it really wasn't all that important to you because when it is, it gets done. And so I thought that was a great place to start um, because we have put in place and this podcast that he talks about the 10 vows of the rich, it's about mindset because 
you have to put in place financial those financial um, systems as well. And so I think all, everybody in this group, if you haven't already, has done the um, Theme, or the calculator, the business planning calculator, to know to have your um, to have your really clear goals for the year and how what you need, what you want to make, and how you're going to get there. So that's the first step in having that mind made up. You have to have that clarity in what you need, right? And Buffini talks a lot about um, the the mindset of someone that wants to get rich because they just want to get rich, right? For the bigger boat, the bigger thing, the bigger next thing, you're never gonna be rich in life, right? You're always gonna want that next thing. But when you change your mindset on what rich looks like and um, what money can get you, it's because you're, you put yourself in the position to be able to help more people, right? You have maybe less stress and less more be able to focus on the right things. And so I really do love it when um, Brian talks about the mindset around being rich and what money can provide you, because I know a lot of us have that weird thing in our head about being, he goes, rich kind of makes you feel a little bad. Like we don't want to say that, right? We don't want to be rich, but what can, what does money allow you to do in other people's lives and what you, what you're able to do with that? So um, I really, if you haven't listened to that podcast or the power of a mind made up, definitely go back and listen to it. I'm going to read these just really quick to get us started um, off today on this discussion and every single um, week this um, year, whenever we do the mindset or the mastermind discussion, um, there's no homework. There's, you don't have to go listen to that um, podcast, but it really will help the discussion. And, um, but you just show up and be ready to be open and engage in the conversation, speak up. And then at the end of every mastermind discussion, because a good mastermind, the purpose of it is for like-minded individuals, the best of the best to be sharpened and to sharpen each other, right? And so at the end of every single one, the last about 15 minutes, I want us to share, and we're going to go over this um, next week as well, but our just ideas and brainstorming revolving around different things that you might recommend, refer your vendors, um, different places you've been to recently that might be good for a client event or a, you know, business mixer, venues, restaurants, just different places that you guys have seen in your communities um, that you know about, different ways to ask for reviews, different ways to ask for referrals. So we'll go over those at the end, but it's just you guys sharing the best of the best and collaborating together on those ideas. So that will be, that will always kind of wrap up our mastermind discussions. And um, well, after we kind of discuss some questions and I have some questions to kind of prompt us. Those are those ones on the screen. We don't have to, we're not gonna go through those individually, but they're just something to kind of get the conversation going um, on the topic of the month. And we might focus on one question more than the other ones. So. The 10 vows of the rich, um, really, it has to do with, yes, um, you know, rich, money, financial um, stability and all that. But it, again, it goes back to the mindset that you have because um, it all starts there, right? And so we talked about uh, Viktor Frankl um, in the, uh-oh, I'm going to go blank on that. But when you know your why, you can endure any how, right? That's one of the very classic um, quote that we hear that really revolves around when we really know what our why is and what our goals are, it's, you know, it's, you can do it, you can survive anything. So number one, never again will I pity or belittle myself. I love that that's number one because it starts with ourselves, right? So catching yourself, um, being down on yourself, ragging on yourself, just get that out of the way, just get it out of there and stop yourself before you let yourself go that down that path. Never again will I greet the dawn without a map. We need a plan. Never again will I be disagreeable to a living soul. Um, always will I seek the seed of triumph in every advers adversity. Never again will I perform any task less than my best. Always will I throw my whole self into the task at hand. Never again will I wait and hope for opportunity to embrace me. Always will I examine each, each night my deeds of the fading day. So that's that recap of the day or the week. What 
infirmity have I mastered today, what passion opposed, what temptations resisted, what virtue acquired. Always will I maintain contact through prayer with my creator. The 10 vows of the rich that none of those actually had to do with being rich, right? So um, hopefully that was, if that was new to you, I did post this in the Growing with Goals group, this PDF for you to be able to print out. Brian shared it at many of his uh, mastermind events to hang up and repeat to yourself every morning. Um, but they're, they're really good affirmations to really focus on and um, be able to maintain that um, good mindset, right? What are, what are your guys' first thoughts? Which one's your favorite of all those um, vows? I like the never again will I greet the dawn without a map. That's a really good one for planning, knowing what you're doing the next day. Um, right. And I don't always do that, but, well, but I'm going to try to do that better. <laughs> For in sure. second, India. <laughs> I, that's well, what I was, was going to say. Mm -hmm. I, I love the always will I seek the seed of triumph in every adversity. Mm -hmm. So seeing the solution or, you know, what did work versus what didn't happen or didn't go my way. Yeah. Always the that's, positive. That's the one I was going to say. <gasps> I mm -hmm. love it, Debbie always will I seek the seed of triumph and edit because we can find that little bit. What is, what is the silver lining, right? I think we've all become pros at the silver lining, right? That's what 2020 made us better at is finding that little bit of, okay, well that sucked, but you know, this was able to happen. So I think that's a really great mindset or, or way to look at the world, right? Last week I was on a call with Preston Smiles and he said, what does everybody think ABC means? And obviously in sales, everybody was like, always be closing. And he said, I want you to change your mindset and have it be always be celebrating. And so <laughs> even if it's not good, you learn from it and you're celebrating that, right? So I think that kind of goes along with it. I like that. Yeah, no, yeah, I, I like I, that. I love celebrating. You gotta, you gotta <laughs> celebrate the wins right yeah. keep on going i was gonna say one of my favorite quotes i feel like i posted it a lot but it's like you either win or you learn yep yep you can always see that and i like there's a lot in here that we talk about so i always feel really good when our group is focused on it's almost like a affirmation or um that we're on the right thing right because it talks about having a plan and reflecting and we've talked a lot about checking in Right, he said, always will I examine each night my deeds of the fading day. So we've talked about the end of the day check-ins, end of the week check-ins, and I think that supports waking up with a plan, right? And so we, like, that shows us even more. We gotta keep doing that. We gotta, like, if a once a week check-in was your first, you know, goal, build that habit first and then start working in maybe a couple more times a week where you check in at night. Um, and going over what infirmity have I mastered today? What went well, right? What didn't go well? What temptation did I resist? Where did I veer off track, but I got right back on. So reviewing, reviewing each day. So like a lot of those kind of go, they support each other there with planning out your day and starting off your day. Good. Which other ones did you guys like? There was something that he's sorry. No, go ahead. Adrian. There was something that he said after the last one. And he said, I pray that you'll give me abilities to match my opportunities. Ooh. And I, I heard it when I was driving, I was listening to the podcast on the way somewhere. And I went home and listened again, just to write down that one quote, because that really stuck out to me. Yeah. Give me the abilities to match my opportunities. And I was going to say that um, always will I throw my whole self into the task at hand because I actually was talking to myself last week as I was doing things. And as I would work on something, something else would pop up and I would start like a whole nother like thing. Like the more, <laughs> yeah. you know, they say multitasking, that was like the thing. And now it's like, I'm hearing, no, just focus on what you're doing. And I find myself going eight different directions and accomplishing nothing, but yeah. I, but I'm busy, but not in a good way. So yeah. that one is a big one for me that I've kind of an epiphany this past few weeks. 
I love that. So then that, that's going to be a big one for you. Always will I throw my whole self into the task at hand, not all of them, just that task. And then it kind of goes with never again will I perform any task less than my best. So I kind of, I like that more instead of just throwing stuff together for that appointment. It's like, take the time, focus on that one thing and make it really, really good. And when you do that, you kind of clear yourself up in the future. You don't have to worry about that anymore, right? When you go all in on that one thing, make it really, really good, move on. We've talked a lot about that too. Well, cool. I'm glad you guys um, liked those and hopefully those kind of help remember, you know, will remind us of these things. Is there something while you were um, thinking about, or when it comes to mindset and discipline, is there something that comes to your mind that really is, you've made up your mind? When I said, you know, once we make up our mind about something, nothing's gonna stop us. We've talked a lot about our goals, our vision, what we want to see happen this year. What is one of those things that you can think of that you have, you have made up your mind? This is going to happen this year. Doing all my calls, notes, and pop buys. Doing your action steps. Yeah, I'm going to um, echo that by saying do the Buffini plan, not just watch and attend the Buffini events, but do the plan. Do the plan, right? Not just say, oh, yeah, that's good. Oh, yeah, I'm sure that would make me successful. We're actually going to do it, right? And guys, what I think is so great about this group and those of you that are joining us new, it's it takes time. Like, you know what is right and you know what is good to do, right? But I do, what I've seen over the last two years of us doing this is, it's almost been two years, is first we had to wrap our brains around the thing that we know is right to do, right? We had to be like, okay, that is my one thing I'm going to focus on. I'm going all in on the working by referral system. Then we had to get that plan because you can have a plan, but then when you actually implement it and execute it, that's a whole other step of habits, right? Of going back to just that, not the other things that distract you. And then once you're actually implementing and executing the plan, you're building habits around that. And it takes time to build those habits once you've decided on that's the actual plan. And now I feel like we're, some of us are at that point in the journey where we have built the habits, right? We show up every Tuesday, we go back to the action steps that we know we're supposed to be doing. So it makes sense to me that this year we're doing it. There's no, there's nothing stopping us, right? We, we know what it means. We've wrapped our brains around it. We've gone all in on this. We've put systems, we've put things in place, the trackers, the showing up every week, the power hours, we've put all those things into place to, to be able to actually get the action steps done, right? And so now we're just gonna do them. That's all we gotta do left, right? We've just gotta do them 100% and do nothing less than the best. And so even if we fall a little bit short of that, right? Because none of us are doing the system 100%, but that's the goal. And it's much, much better with the consistency and the um, focus on it than not doing that, right? So um, I love that that was the one that you, you're committed to. Anything else besides the action steps that you guys are committed to doing this year, you've made up your mind about? I think, um, you know, we talked about this, about reflecting, and it's one of the things that when you and I first started talking about planners, it's like that I love the reflecting, but it was really hard to do. And then we sat here one Tuesday before Christmas and we, I mean, I remember like, but how do you get it? Like, how do you make everything happen? And I knew the answer was reflecting at the end of the day. And so I, all last year, I really focused, not that I was perfect. I never got, I only one time got out all 40 notes, but, um, but I still contacted people. I didn't always reach a hundred, but I still at least did some of it, of everything. And um, so this year I am really focused on reflecting. And I, what I see is that it's sort of honing my skill that it's just like, you didn't focus yesterday look, there's two days that you didn't even reflect, like you need to get and make sure you're doing what you're doing. So you're focusing on the top three actions that you need to get complete, you know, whether it's phone calls or, um, you know, I don't know what I, 
whatever I have to do that's high priority that day, but just reflecting on it to getting it done um, or reflecting on at the end of the day, what's causing me to keep from getting it done. Mm -hmm. So. No, I think that's, that's big reflecting and you're almost taking reflecting. We almost have this thing in our brain about what we first think of when we hear reflecting, right? We think of it at the end of the year, you're reflecting on your year or you're reflecting on something in more of a emotional type way, but we're almost saying reflecting as in what we just said, the drift and refocusing the reflecting on, okay, what did I, what did I do instead of those things I said I was going to get done? And, and then how do I prevent that from happening tomorrow? Right? right. Like, yeah, I yeah. actually got majorly distracted organizing my kitchen. So instead of even going into the kitchen, I'm going to go get my action steps done before mm -hmm. I go clean, you know, the dishes in the sink, because that will derail me. So you I know, like it that. actually it's made me to, to, which hopefully this will encourage everybody. I'm really hard on myself. I'm a perfectionist. I never see, and I'm the perfectionist to where you really can't see because nothing's perfect. Everything's sort of <laughs> yes. cha chaotic mess. I got, I um, got I'm that too. I like that. That is, yeah. we're not so, perfect. Um, but there's but I realize as I'm reflecting that it's like, oh my gosh, I'm getting a crap load done. <laughs> like, okay, so maybe I didn't focus on what I needed to get done today. Maybe I need to revamp that. But I also, it made me realize that I really am doing a lot. Mm -hmm. So, and that was, that was sort of a great benefit because I'm always so hard on myself that I can only see what I didn't do. Mm -hmm. instead of seeing, well, maybe I didn't get these two other things done, but you know what? I got my version of how to buy a house, the first phase done, and I'm excited, <laughs> or I got my survey done, you know, just completing something. And that keeps the momentum going. That yes. instead of feeling good, bad about what you didn't do, you feel good about what you did do. And that keeps that good, good vibes going in order to get more done instead of being hard on yourself and not want to try. Right. 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 So that, that was sort of a shocking outcome from reflecting every evening. So I hope that that encourages y'all to be like, I'm not going to reflect because I don't want to see what I didn't do. But if you <laughs> reflect and see what you did do, you're like, oh, wow. Oh, good. Pat myself on the back today. There you go. That's what, and I feel like I preach this now, but I feel like this year I've already felt so much less chaos because if you just focus on like the little things that you need to do, and like you said, Karen, just reflecting on it, like all you got to do is this, this, and this, and you're good for the day, you know, like that's successful and it feels so much less chaotic. So, and I love you saying that because I feel like that's, I, I love how this group has really been like intentional in what they're doing. And I think Gina's kind of forcing us to get that way, but I love it. Um, and actually like reflecting that's intentional. So then you're like, okay, I know what I can do better tomorrow and okay, I'm getting super off track. I'm going to just stick with my calls, notes, and Popeyes. Like, I love that Jennifer said that. Cause that's all you really got to do. That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. Feeny system. He's like, there's so many other things we have to do that come at us. The system itself is not rocket science. You just got to keep it simple and just keep doing those things. And so when the things are coming at you, you can do those, right? And that's the big part where I think people kind of fall off of this. They think they have to do all these other great, big, fancy ideas that are, you know, new and shiny, but really just do these things. And it has to be simple so that you can actually do them and maintain a pipeline while all that other stuff is happening. So what I like too is what disciplines have you established to achieve your goals? I think we are all talking about those disciplines, right? We've put the power hours in place. We put the reflecting time. If you haven't started that, I mean, let's, we're all, we've been talking a lot about that, those check-ins. Um, what other disciplines have helped you guys actually get done what you need to get done? The check-ins, the power hours, The journal, I was, <laughs> Debbie Godfrey just held up. Where are you guys, the tracking in itself is a discipline, right? Mm -hmm. Have you guys felt like the tracking and like having that one place to go to has helped? Mm -hmm. Whether it's your to-do list, your action tracking. The planner for sure, absolutely. 
Love it. Yeah, I agree. It's nice to have everything in one spot finally. That was a challenge for me. I had like different journals, different papers, and now it's all in one spot. So that's so helpful. Love it. And I'm chiming in here to say going from like five different notebooks down to one. And then um, yes. my goal is to now get it onto Gina's journal. And so Gina's journal has a great big heart and it's like too pretty to use, but I promise I am. <laughs> I'm glad. Yes, the tracker. Um, I'm glad that's been such a big part. And it's you guys have all created it with me, right? Like this is because we've all put in how it works. And we made something together that actually we want to use. And that to me is the biggest. There's lots of things that work out there, right? But we've got to go all in on something we want to open up every single day. And, and luckily, that's what we've made. You know, and disciplines, we don't need to have a whole ton, right? I think we've also gotten back to like the essentials. We were trimming down and like what Rachel said, too. It's like, we just need to focus on these things. We just need these few disciplines that really help. And it floods. It's the ripple effect into every other area of our life, right? Um. Does your business mindset, right, Rachel, remember when we came up with these questions, some of them I'm like, hmm, where did we get that question? No, it was kind of just like you said at the beginning, you can go back and reflect on it, but it's kind of just like you pick one or two that you actually want to talk about, but it just gets your yeah. brain going a little. No, I know, but some of them I was just like, what did we mean by that? <laughs> Who knows in a moment. What? Through all this reflecting and everything you guys have done, um, I think we're, we're doing good on. You guys feel confident in the disciplines that we've established? Is there a discipline that you're thinking of that you're like, man, how do I get better at that discipline? Because that's what I want to know, you know, what you're, what's that little thing in your head that kind of keeps coming to mind that you want to get better at? Mine is the, just actually making the phone calls. Like I'll go through and I tend to pick calls that I know maybe I'm familiar with the person or it's the, it's the making the phone call of the person that you don't necessarily vibe with or yeah. you have anything in common with, or so it's, it's actually doing that for me. Just don't call them, call everybody else. <laughs> That's my problem. That's what I keep doing. <laughs> and there's some that are just not getting that phone call. Yeah. Or just, just text, text or message the person that maybe you don't want to talk on the phone with for that long, you know, or go or look them up on Facebook and see what they're doing. And then have that. I think if you have a reason to call that you're excited about, so whether yeah. it's something you're excited about that you're like, Oh, I'm going to just call everybody in my database. Cause I'm excited about this fundraiser I'm doing. Or go find something that you know that they're going to be excited to talk about that maybe they're talking about on their social media and have a conversation. Hey, I saw that you just got back from a trip. How was it? You know, that's a good idea. But I think, I think the calls, we've been talking a lot about the struggle around calling people. And I think the root of it is we, it's like, we, we don't know what to say. We don't want it to sound dumb. We don't want it to feel salesy and that's a very easy fix, right? There's so many things we can talk about and like we it's all out there, right? Whether it's something you're super excited about or something that you can talk to them about in their world. And social media gives us all the conversation starters there are, right? And just, and I think another thing is right now, it's still, you know, checking in to see how people were. We did a really good job of that when COVID first started. I think we can, don't lose that. We remember how many people answered their phones and were excited to talk to people. I think that's still a really big, um, I think that's still very valid, you know? And I think people find out about their holidays if it was hard on them, you know? Like it was for a lot of people, they weren't able to see their loved ones. So just, I think it doesn't have to be a big reason to reach out, just reach out. But eating the, it kind of goes to eating the frog, right? And you're always surprised that it's never as bad as you thought. <laughs> Gina? 
Mm -hmm. I will tell you that I invited a past client out for lunch yesterday. It was so awkward. It was like asking for a date. And I was like, I promise I don't have a sales pitch for you. I really just want to see you. And you asked me for some tax papers. I'll give you that. But I was like, oh my gosh, I've got my first luncheon with somebody. And she was laughing at me, but it was, I felt so beyond awkward asking because I was like, we never see each other in person. The transaction was done, you know, a couple of years ago. It's just random out of the blue. And I just called her to say, hey, did you get the pot by? And um, and then she, uh, we started talking and, and then I was like, wow, let's go to lunch. <laughs> and it was like, okay. I'm like, I finally, I just told her, you know, this is my to-do list this year. My, my, my January re resolution is to have lunch with all of my most favorite people. And you're the first one. And so that made her excited. Oh, and so when it, you haven't gone yet, we're going tomorrow. Oh my gosh. Well, I can't wait to hear how that is. And I love that you pushed yourself and felt super awkward and just did it anyways. And you called because of a pop by, which is a great reason to call. And then it turned into something else, huh? And it yep. wasn't as bad. Even just making the phone call wasn't as bad as you thought, right? It was worse, but I made it through. Next time I'll be a little bit more polished, but she was a friend, so she kind of laughed it through. <laughs> oh my goodness. Guys, fake it till it's real. People don't know that you're like winging it most of the time. But I think that's part of this pushing your outer limits. You're pushing yourself. You're making yourself uncomfortable, right? We've got, if we want to be better than we were yesterday, don't we have to do that? And sometimes we don't want other people pushing us because then we even shut down even more. But when you push yourself to feel awkward, I think that's where the most growth comes from, right? Because you're doing it all by yourself and you know why you're doing it. It's because at the end of the day, it's going to make a difference. You're getting those appointments. You're asking for those. You're putting yourself in the opportunity to get those referrals and ask for, you know, let people know what you're doing and how much you love it, right? So that's kind of like supporting your mindset of pushing yourself. Can anybody else think of some a scenario that you've pushed yourself to feel awkward kind of outside your normal comfort zone? I just want to encourage you to make the call. We get in our heads so much and we think it's been too long or I'm, they don't want to hear from me. They'll see right through me. I, I've had multiple times recently where people say, I am so glad you called. I've been meaning to reach out to you. So just do it. They want to hear from you. We say it all the time. We all know it. You guys have an example of someone that you were really dreading to call and then you did and it turned out good. I've actually like called a couple. It's been in the last couple of weeks, but I've like, they pop up in my head and I call them and I'm not like a huge, I'll just be honest. Like if I, I hate being caught on the phone for a long time. Cause I'm very like fast paced. So I love texting or like audio messaging, but there were like two people who I thought, you know what, I really need to like call them. And both of them were like, were your ears burning? Like I was just thinking about you and I'm like, okay, are you lying to me? Or are you being honest? And it sounded like they were being honest. And I was like, that's so cool. So sometimes I feel like that's, it's a God thing too. Like if you have someone on your mind, reach out to them. Um, and they were both really good conversations. So just fun. Mm -hmm. Very good. Anybody else have a story like that where you're like, man, I'm glad I did that. Well, mine's kind of reverse. I actually had someone call me that had questions um, about, I, I can't remember, it was something about their mortgage or anyway, it was just kind of a random question. And it was a couple that I never really connected with. In fact, they were not the nicest people. And he said, oh, and by the way, I have a friend who's looking to purchase and he wants to move up here by me. So I'm giving him your name and your number. And I was floored because I didn't think we had any kind of a connection at all. And I guess maybe it was just it, I think it was a culture thing. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you can't really read it, but yeah. anyway, so I didn't actually make the phone call that he called me to ask a real estate question. I was just kind of surprised by that. Yeah. So no, I, I, I just assume that's one of those people. And that's something you can do. Like 
putting their name up on your somewhere you can see on a regular basis when you make those phone calls is almost like a reminder to not assume that these people don't like you, right? Because you remember from that one name, like they reached out, they were referring me, they liked me. And that kind of can remind you and other when you don't want to call someone, think about that scenario and how that felt too, right? Because you kind of probably felt a little silly that you didn't think they liked you and that you didn't reach out to them because of that. And here they are referring you. Um, have those little, those, those scenarios. I think that's a great putting someone's name up so that you think of that every time you have that thought cross your head is a great, um, just, you know, something to remind yourself, right? That's a great story. Cause we, that happens so much where we think, mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't good or they didn't like us. They'll never refer us. And that's why I think it's important too. And like y'all, I feel like everyone on here, like always being nice, always being kind, always coming from value and people appreciate that and they remember it no mm -hmm. matter if it's like awkward or culture differences or whatever. Yeah. Until they say, I don't like you, stop calling me. You in your yeah. head, just be confident and just call them and just, sure. you're not selling them anything guys. You're not selling them a home over the phone, right? You're just there to be nice. You're just there to be, to add value. Um, one of the things we said, a mindset leading from confidence. Um, there's some thoughts that we put down. They know so many agents, they won't use me. Or if they, I haven't talked to them in so long versus this prospect is going to fall in love with my skill sets and value, right? Not, hey, they probably talked to a hundred agents today at all the open houses versus um, I, you know, I, I'm confident in what I can add to a new home buyer that doesn't know what they're doing, right? So, sorry, I was having technical Ill issues with my computer earlier and getting logged in, but um, the um, what Leslie was saying earlier about, you know, people that you just cringe when you feel like you have to call them or whatever, or those people that you're scared to, I call those sandpaper people, like, they're gonna, they're gonna, like smooth off some uh, rough edge on me, um, you know, so just do it. Um. <laughs> Sand, paper, people. I love that. People that rub you the wrong way. I, no, I love words like that. That can, it again, reminds you of thinking of them, eating the frog, sandpaper people, but in the end, you're better for it, right? Right, exactly. Yeah, and it might be a little rough at first, but we're going to smooth it all out and it's going to be good. Well, I love that because it's like it makes you tougher and it makes them less rough, you yeah. know, by you kind of reaching well, out. And it kind of makes you tough because you did it, you did the awkward thing, and then it makes them a little bit more smooth because you kind of smoothed them over a little bit. Yep, I love that. Um, what about? Also, when you, do you guys catch yourselves, is there something that you can think of right now that you know you should be doing better that you're like, Ooh, I can't do that. You know, I can't do live videos. I'm just not good at it. I think everyone is like, yep, Gina, we've heard, yep. I've heard you say that before. I just can't do them. I'm just not good at it. Oh, I just hate myself. I just hate myself on camera. Oh, my voice is horrible on camera. You know what I thought? Um, and actually it just got put to rest yesterday. I, I really hate videos too. And I haven't engaged in the videos yet. And my oldest daughter has, and I'm just like, oh, I don't want to get a video. And so I was talking to somebody that was close to my age. Cause I'm like, I just think it's an age thing. So I am putting up this big excuse that people my age don't want the video. And so I talked to my friend who I'm trying to get her to write like a little moving manual because she's moved her mom from Georgia to here without going to Georgia and got everything moved here and into an apartment for her. So I'm like, could you just write that for me? Maybe we could, maybe we can somehow monetize it, even if it's minor for you. And so she said, yes. And she goes, what? She calls me and she goes, well, I think I need to do it and do a video. So maybe we just need to do a video series. I'm like, what you talking about, Willis? <laughs> You are not, uh -uh, you do not like it. She goes, I love video. And I'm like, uh-uh, don't tell me that. It God, put all my excuses. Thing. You cannot say it's an age thing. <laughs> I couldn't. I tried for a whole year and a half. <laughs> so, so it's an angle thing for me. Yeah. 
So you have to get the right <laughs> angle on the video. Yeah. So instead of saying, I can't do live videos or, you know, oh, no one's going to watch it. No one likes watching videos, whatever it might be. What's something that you guys can try to do, whether it's angles of you doing the best angles or you're doing a really quick video, but doing, instead of saying that, saying, okay, next, you know, this month I'm going to do four videos and I'm going to look back and see the thing like, and reevaluate it. Right. And do it just for yourself. Right. How many, how, how did it feel doing it or whatever it might be, but putting down something of that you, that your mindset is saying, no, putting it down and actually putting a number to it and doing it for yourself, reevaluate it. Which, which one was the best angle? When I did it in my living room, my office, my wherever outside, tried four different spots that you could do a video. And then going back and looking at all those and see which, which one did I get the best engagement, right? Or which one did I, did I feel the best in? Did I feel the most confident in? I love outside videos for some reason. I don't know why, um, <laughs> but I just like being outside. It's like a different setting, right? So putting something down this month or this year that you're, you know that you have this mindset against and really putting it down on paper and um, coming outside your comfort zone. Is there something you guys can think of that you would put down? I think the biggest thing with video and that, you know, I, I'm fairly comfortable with video. I don't mind it that much, but I think the biggest thing with video, and I know we talked about this in some other classes, is just doing it and just not over evaluating it too much, you know, just do the Facebook live or do it, whatever, mm -hmm. send the video text, like don't do 1000 takes of the same video because you're never going to think that it looks perfect and just do it. And the more that you do that, I think you just become comfortable. And, you know, if you, if you think about the way that you see someone's personality, obviously if they're in front of you and you're seeing them and their smile and their hands and it establishes trust and relationship, whereas words through an email or through a text, like don't have that same relational quality. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's just, you know, people, to kind of see, that people that like you want to see and hear you. They want, they, whether they even know what you're talking about, they want to see and hear you. Um, so it does, we know it does work. And the first video you do the first 10, 15, 20 videos you do there. Well, how do you think you're going to be good at those? Right? Like it cannot be perfect. The first time you do it, we do them all the time. And there's still days that I'm just like, Whoa, that was not it. <laughs> and, but guess what? Who cares? Just post it anyways. And then there's always tomorrow and the, there's new content guys always coming out. You're always putting more stuff out there. No one's going to get too hung up on your silly video that you did a week ago. Right. And I don't watch it. Like I'll do it. Who's talking? Who's talking? And I just send it. Like I don't even go back because I'll critique myself to death and I'll delete it and then I won't redo it. So there is no option for me to watch what I did. I just send it and call it a day. Yep. And, and even for, I cannot do recorded videos. Like the more and more I like live is so much easier for me. I'm, I don't even overthink it. Cause it's like, okay, it's live. I'm just going to start talking versus when I press play and I'm going to record it and then post, I rethink it. And I'm like thinking about all the right things to say. And then I know I can stop it and start it again. And I, it takes me 10 times as long than just a live video. <laughs> Does anybody use bomb bomb? I've learned about it, but that's to put it, what, what, why would you use bomb bomb to put it in your email? Yeah. To be able to do like a mass email video, but I know bomb bomb's not free. So I just, I didn't know if anybody had an opinion one way or the other. I know the lender that I use a lot. She does it like a, maybe it's like a monthly, I don't know if it's weekly, but, um, because I get it and the, I know the importance of the videos I do always watch it but I wonder how many of like her clients like actual buyers will sit and and listen to it versus if they see a live will someone stop down and watch a live versus an email video you know I wonder instead of videos, you could just do like YouTube and put a link 
you know, I don't know if that would have the same engagement, but that would be free and you wouldn't have to pay for bomb bomb. That's true. I'm actually going to a YouTube class on Thursday that super inspector is doing, um, on how to do like good YouTube videos and set up a YouTube. I have a YouTube account. It's just private. Mm -hmm. Um, that I just did a couple of things for my daughter's dance studio that I had to send out and it was long, so I couldn't do a regular video and send it. But, um, yeah, India, that's probably a good idea is the YouTube and not pay for bomb bomb. And you can make a, so the email people that I use, they said, you know, we can't embed a video in there, but if you do a graphic that looks like a video and put the play button on top of it, right? So you could create a graphic, just your standard video graphic, right? And you could maybe change the title of it or whatever it might be, but you can put that photo in your email and actually highlight the photo and make the YouTube link from there. So they click on the video that looks like a play button and it takes them directly to YouTube to watch it. Maybe you could do a little tutorial on that, Gina. Yeah, maybe that will be if you guys I, next month for, and or maybe even next week, I was going to go over our our idea factory of ideas of video content so maybe we will go over that i'll say guys it kind of goes back to you've got to have you've got to be the habit has to be there before you put out a master plan mm -hmm. and so last year i tried to do a youtube video thing on a regular basis i recorded them all I have them in my computer. I had a date for every single one of them, but I overthought it. I overplanned it. And I didn't do any YouTube last year because I was just like, no. This year, I've gotten the routine of all the different, every week, you know, I do a promotion of our webinars and I've been doing that on, you know, Tuesdays after this or Mondays. But I had to get that habit down first of just doing the promotion anywhere I could. And now it's easy for me to do it on YouTube and kind of house them in one place and make it a little bit cleaner to go back and watch. But I could not do YouTube last year when I was trying to figure out my system and my routine of it all. So I would say before you try to go create this really cool master plan on YouTube and a channel, just get the habit down first. If you think whatever you think you're going to do on YouTube, just go do it live on Facebook every week first. And don't care about what day it is. Just, oh, I missed my day. Oh, it's Tuesday. I was really busy. Do it on Wednesday. Don't put out there, oh, this is a weekly Tuesday thing. Just do it. And nobody cares what day of the week it is or that you do it every week. But for you, you know that you're doing it every week on that day, right? I really, I don't, There, it's hard to start something new and want it to be so official. And then we usually can't do it and then we feel bad about ourselves and we stop the whole plan right so unless it's easy for you to do great but you first you got to make it easy and you can just plug in the link you know face the problem with facebook is you can't go find the videos it will be my only thing it's not as easy to go find videos gina i have a question about the videos so you know you always I don't know if everybody knows this, but you want to be smiling before you start. Otherwise you look like really, I don't know. They find a way to get the worst possible, like you're in the middle of a blink and your mouth's hanging open or something. And so how do you, um, that tip about uh, making a, uh, you know, something, a picture with a little play button is great for, for uh, mm -hmm. YouTube. And I'm totally in for you doing a class. Thanks. We've all told you, <laughs> um, but what, what about, um, Facebook, how, what, any tips for not looking like a scary monster? Just always, yeah. Whenever you press play, just smile. Mm -hmm. Just smile for a second and give the camera. And I guess that is also a habit, you know, cause I don't even think about it anymore, but I always just wait a couple seconds after I press play to start talking. And that's it. And guys, the funny faces are funny. Like, who cares? You know, sometimes I, I want it to look really good, but then other times I'm like, well, you know, maybe they'll, maybe they'll plus play, press play just to see what the heck I was doing in that moment, you know? Um, so yeah, we can definitely do video um, and YouTube. It's, they have live videos on there. You can choose your thumbnail up thing. Like, so there is a lot of cool stuff there, but I will say if videos is just hard for you, that's going to be 10 times harder and you're going to take 10 times more time to do it. And so first,
first just get down the videos as quickly. And that was my big thing. I know, I don't know if you guys have heard me say it a couple of times. I'm done overthinking things. I'm done overthinking the education, the information I want to get out there. I'm just going to put it out there however I can in that moment because I know I won't go back to it. So it's like, I don't care if it's, I just did five. I had five things to say about different things and I'm just going to put the videos out there instead of saying, well, I'm going to plan these out because there'll be more stuff next week, right? So the last 15 minutes, and this will be a little bit, and maybe you guys can be thinking of some ideas and then next week is the best or exclusive class with Gina Carter for goals. And it's going to be about, it was going to be about video. So it might make sense to do if you guys want to know some video content or, you know, YouTube tips, Facebook tips, graphics that you can do. There's just so many different platforms, but the idea at the end of our masterminds is to share what you guys, a podcast you guys have been listening to, a book you guys have been reading, um, vendor, so a new maybe outside the box vendor recommendation that you guys have, something that you asked your sphere for a recommendation that was really, really popular that, I mean, Rachel does them on Mondays and she gets some really good feedback on when she asks for a recommendation or she gives a recommendation. Um, different ways that you guys might ask for a referral or a review, um, a review of your company, where you guys are sending those reviews, how are you guys getting them, and then just also um, your real estate tips, what do you guys need in real estate, um, list, uh, hey, I got listings, I need a buyer, I need houses for this type of buyer in this area, but putting that out there, and we talk about putting those things out there on a regular basis, and in video would be the most ideal way. And that could look like having an, a once a month update video where you go through these things and kind of check them off. Or you guys can do these individually and have, you know, once a month, you just check through each one of these. We call them the R idea factory because they're all reviews, referrals, recommendations, reading or listening, and then real estate and real life, you. So there's lots of, those are our topics. And every month you can pick a few, run through them. You can go focus on one, but they're things we should be talking about every single month. So what are some ideas? What are um, some things that you would recommend or you've done to get a referral or to ask for referrals or reviews that have worked well? India? I, you, I did send all those in a chat before you, and then let somebody talk. So maybe Rachel can type it in the chat to hear all those. Them out? Them okay, India? I did something this week and I don't know if it's going to come to fruition, but I had a friend that I knew from a long time ago. Um, just, you know, we worked together and she had posted on Facebook that she was thinking about selling her house and she was asking for anybody who had an, an agent referral. She doesn't live in Texas. She lives in Nevada. And I happen to know agents there, you know, to try to get them connected. And so I posted the person's name, but of course there was like lots of other people that also had their friends that they were recommending. So after a day or so, I thought, well, maybe instead I will like do an email intro for them. And so I sent the two of them an email, like a virtual introduction and, um, they, she responded and they've actually now connected. So. So say, say that again, you did a video introduction to like the new, the person, the relocation person. Yeah. So this, this person that's selling their house in Las Vegas, um, you know, the whole bunch of people on Facebook had recommended agents to her. And so I, I had recommended someone that I know, but who knows if she was going to choose her. And so I took, an extra step a couple days later to do a virtual email introduction. And I copied both my friend that's an agent and my friend who's selling her house. And I said, Hey, I just wanted to introduce the two of you. Um, you know, I trust so-and-so because they're a great agent and they have a lot of knowledge. They've lived in Las Vegas for, you know, 30 years. And then, you know, I kind of introduced the two of them together and then she responded and now they've connected um, separately outside of my introduction. So I don't know, I thought I was proud of myself that I was like, oh, I took that extra step and maybe it will come work somehow, you For know? Sure. No, I, I love that. And it's going that extra above and beyond. 
it doesn't take that much more time, right? And it's going to stand out against everybody else that's going to be referring someone like, you know, on a post like that or anything like that. So I think that's a great idea. And that's something you can do on Facebook. You know, we see all the time people, hey, who do you know? And then all these people post taking 10 seconds and actually reaching out to that person in messenger and sending a video like that, like, Hey, just want to introduce myself doing it for yourself or for like, Hey, you don't know my friend. She does this, 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 and this she's done my own house. Like she blah, blah, blah. That's they're going to remember that a lot more and feel like they can, they are already getting to know you and that person. Right. Love it. What's another one guys. virtual email introduction for someone and you just plug that video in there in the email did you use bon bon or i didn't do a video but that's a great idea i just emailed the two oh, of them i copied both people on the same email and kind of did a virtual introduction but the video would have been awesome Next. yes <laughs> yes yeah sorry when you said virtual i just went video <laughs> But yeah, when you refer someone, like making that connection like that for sure helps, you know, and getting everybody on the same email chain or text message chain even. Is yeah, it just seems like it's easier and somebody can just respond and say, oh, and start a conversation rather than having to go back and look or look them up or whatever, you know, I just loop. One other that. thing. I was going to say, I love that. I've done that just like in a group text, connecting people, but the video, that's, that's extra. I love that. Mm -hmm. So like if you ever get a lead that you've never met the person before, whether it's a Zillow lead or a referral or whatever, mm -hmm. um, I've done it where I'll actually do like a video text versus just a text or voicemail. So I'll actually do the video and send that to them, introducing myself and kind of put a face with a name and a little bit more personal, personable. Mm -hmm. Yep. Even for like a sign call, got, think about like, you know, you get those sign calls and it might be something, it might not be something, but if you just took that, you know, after that sign call to actually put your face and your voice and like send them a message saying, just getting to know them, that's definitely one step further some for some passive referral you know leads right mm -hmm. what about um anybody reading anything or listening to any other podcast besides brian buffini <laughs> that you guys um have been thinking of or that have really helped kind of get you motivated for this year um I went back, I'm reading a uh, millionaire agent and then also um, millionaire next door, next door millionaire. Next door millionaire. I think I've heard about that one. Millionaire next door. It takes me um, a long while to read a book unless I'm in like a book oh, club. It's tiny. It's yeah. Ooh, I love tiny books. That's good. I was going to say, I am so. No, print is tiny. <laughs> Oh, no, what we like small. I like tiny books. Yeah. <laughs> With large print. No, but the book I am slowly getting through is the 12 week year. Mm -hmm. And I love it so far. It like, and it ties in so well with Buffini because it's work smarter, not harder kind of thing. Like just super mm -hmm. focused, intentional. And I want to live my life like that. Rachel, <laughs> I just finished that at the end of the year. And I took a chapter a day trying to make my goal of finishing it by the end of the year. So taking it that way, it, it's not one you can just sit down and try to read a lot. You need to take a little thought at a time. And that worked out really well. I love that. Thank you. I'll yeah. take the whole year to read the 12 week year and <laughs> 2022 I'll implement. <laughs> so it took me most of 2020 to read Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. Um, negotiation wise, I thought that was really, really a good book. Yep. If you want to hone your negotiation skills, what's funny is Buffini's, uh, had never split the difference, the author on, um, his podcast and the, and that's why I read it. Mm -hmm. so. The negotiation, because when you're negotiating someone's life, like, you know, 
a, a bad negotiation, you know, like you can't split the difference. You got to get that person, you know, we don't want someone to die. So it's a little bit extreme, but any other books that you guys read last year, get out of your head. Rachel and I listened to, or I listened to that one. Oh my I'm God. reading, um, I'm reading Eat That Frog. Eat that frog. Eat that frog. There, there's a we book also have that? to read Compound Effect at the office for the us launch people. I've read That's that. I've listened to it before. The compounding effect. Yeah, I, yeah. Compound effect, or I think it's just compound. By oh, okay. uh, what's Darren Hardy? See, I've got all these books. I've got them all. Yeah. Oh, we hear. Get out of your head. Like I've got them all. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of your head. This is a great one. There's a devotional with that one too. And you can listen to it audio, but it's more Jesus C based. I did do, I did the devotional first with my youngest, or not my middle daughter. And so she bought the book for me for Christmas because it was sweet. So I had an agent friend recommend Ninja Selling and I listened to that on audio and it was really good, but I think I actually want to read the book. Um, and somebody I on, do audio. I don't know. Oh, well, I do it when I drive. Um, but I also don't really listen. So that's what I was like. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then somebody else on our chat said, go give her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a really good one. Really good. <laughs> she just got there. She goes. I've got that one too. What's his um, name? Andy something. There's a podcast with him and Buffini that's old that I listened to like the other day. Andy Andrews. Yes. Oh my gosh. So good. Yep. Um, the go-giver. Um, Andy Andrews is really, really good. I'm reading this one about leadership right now. Leadership what? mastery. It's really good in dealing with people. So leadership mastery. I like it. It's, uh, Billy, on audible it has um, to be work related because um i'm reading one called fervent mm -hmm. and it's by um fervent? priscilla so shirer and mm -hmm. it's about praying he's good super super amazing how do you spell fervent that's awesome. Just to Priscilla S. She has Debbie going off of that. She has a devotional called Voice of God. And I just got that. I've heard like amazing things about it. So yeah. And then last year I did the armor of God. Mm -hmm. And that one was really my good too. And kids. <clears throat> so um, did you like that, Debbie? The um, armor of God? I did. And so yeah, and the fervent one goes back to that war room movie kind of so that's but it's been really good and very just encouraging it's just not it's just not business so that's okay yeah totally fine i was gonna say i have a podcast recommendation and it i love podcast rec recommendations i cannot listen to a book in the car so if you have good podcasts send me those because I'll listen to them. But our sales manager, Dave, actually has his own podcast and it's called Ways. And I love them because they're very, very short and it's like sales techniques. Um, and I'll, I'll listen to them like just real quick. Like if you need just a boost before you call someone or an appointment, there's one on self-belief and it's one of my favorites. So Go, go follow him. He's an amazing person too. And he's interesting to listen to, right, Gina? Yeah, no, I, it's funny, Dave, um, he's our sales manager and he's so well, like his big thing, he wants everything. I almost want to say like, I need you to talk more like normal. Like he talks so well pronounced and he articulates everything. Yeah. And I know he redoes them until he sounds right. And so I'm like, and that's almost like the opposite of me. Mine kind of like comes out and like throw up sometimes. And so I like listening to him because it reminds me to be more thoughtful in the way I say things. But no, Dave's are really good. And he's also opposite of me because his are between every time, two to three minutes, two, four minutes, you know, they're short and sweet, which is something else I should get better at. But um, yeah. 
I want to throw out there um, a podcast to listen to, uh, Craig Rochelle's Leadership Podcast. Um, Craig Rochelle's a pastor, but he also um, leads the um, uh, leadership, global leadership national, or I forgot what the name is, global, global leadership summit. I can't remember, but they have a bunch of podcasts that are free and they have um, on there, like the guy, the hundred, hundred no's in a hundred days. And they're all international well, about that. business um, owners and how they lead their teams. It's, um, it's all walks of life, but Craig Groeschel is himself does a lot of interviews very similarly to um, Brian Buffini. And they're all about 20 minute podcasts. So very easy to listen to in your drive. And they're a weekly thing where he occasionally will have just himself speaking or um, uh, his interviews. And it is absolutely one of my favorite. I mean, I go to Life Church and he's, he's the pastor, but he has a business degree and um, uh, does a lot of things virtually. So he is older, like my age, but has embraced the millennial culture, the online social media. So he has a lot of information and tips about that. But um, in addition to that, he will say, this is, you know, my business is my church. And, but it's not a, a preachy thing, you know? And so it's, it's very, very um, easy to listen to digest. Very good. Awesome. And I found out how to spell his name correctly. Um, very good guys. Well, lots of good vibes and good things to go look into if you're looking to read and um, this year, if you, that's one of your goals. Um, I will say all these things that we, we want to do better at and we want to wrap our mind, get that right mindset Going back to, um, and I'll kind of wrap up because we've talked about this um, when we were doing our business planning class, I had started the book Atomic Habits and I'm like, Rachel, it's hard for me to read a book and I get mad at myself and I'm almost gave up on the goal of reading because I'm like, I never can do it. And the Atomic Habits book, I think the second chapter talks about instead of working from what you, the outcome to make you a reader, start with who you want to be, right? So with our mindset, who do you want to be? Do you want to be someone that people enjoy watching on social media and you want to be that person that they're always happy and excited and talking about something they're pumped up about that's consistent in their videos, that's, that does the extra above and beyond things? Do you want to be that person? Well, focus on that. And then what, and then the, all the action will fall into place, right? So it's instead of going from output, outcome, process, who you are as your identity, start with your identity. What's the process to get the outcome, right? So I kind of thought it, when it related to reading, I was like, I don't like reading per se, but I do love taking nuggets from a book and what I've learned and making a worksheet, right? Or talking about it and discussing it. So I almost, I like reading to like create more things and to build on a little bit more to go teach others. And so I'm like, instead of looking at a book, like I just need to get through this book and read. If I look at a book and say, okay, what can I create from reading this book to help others like build on and like work through things like to build habits. I like doing that. And it kind of changed my mindset on reading. If I looked at it as like, almost like research for a class versus I just need to read a book. And I'm like, wow, that really changed my mindset because of who I want to teach, right? I want to be a teacher. I want to create things and new ideas for people. I don't really want to be a reader. So that was just something to think about when you're talking about the habits you want to build. And if there's one that you just cannot, cannot create the habit, think about the person you want to be with that habit and focus only on that. Right. So who, who do you want to be um, in with your mindset and with your different things, the disciplines that you want to put into place, the disciplines would be the process. Right. But who do we want to be? You know, um, Gina, I like that you're saying that because it's actually in your, when the week, one of your reflections is how, um, what does it impact if I don't do this? And that's ba basically what you just said. What, what is it going to impact if I don't read this yeah. and how is it not? And, believe it or not, like when I 
one of those hard calls to make what was to a friend that um wants to sell our house and wants to use a different realtor. And then, so like my, what will I accomplish this week was like, just contact her. And the minute I wrote down, what will it impact if I don't, I'll lose $13,000. You know, that made, that made that text that I just sent her really easy. Like, like, wow. So um, I still haven't got the deal, but I think I love how you said that because that's one of the things in the reflections, like how, how is this going to impact if I don't do this? Mm -hmm. so how is it going to impact me if I don't read this atomic habit is, is awesome and it's one that you just sometimes you have to take it a little bit at a time because you're mm. you know it's a lot to change with us perfectionists that create chaos who want everything to be perfect yep no it's just the little bits of taking it and the mindset it starts with the little stuff right so who do you want to be? Have it up. Have these things down. You guys were awesome. I hope this was helpful for everybody and it got our good, good juices flowing. Um, next month is all about organization and built foundation. So that's our theme for February. I'm really excited about. Um, I'll be sharing this um, little note. So if you guys um, didn't get to take all those down, I'll kind of clean it up and post it together, but hopefully everyone's getting the emails on Sunday. If you are not, let me know. You need to opt in for those emails. And um, if you need contracts to E this Thursday, we're doing three hours. JC Johnson, he's coming to my home studio and we'll be teaching a two hour contract class. And then him and I will be teaching a class together on title policy. So I'm excited about that. Share that with friends that need their contract CE, especially those people that have their um, license and um, renewal in February. They'll need all three hours in February. Um, but let me know if you guys have any other questions, okay? Wait, Gina, Gina do they know what they you call your house? The South Alliance branch. <laughs> the best thing ever. I love that. Science <laughs> branch. Welcome, JC. Don't mind my dogs. Um, <laughs> so so we'll, we'll see how that is. Okay, guys. Wish me luck. <laughs> hey, Gina, this is kind of off to topic, but I use the, um, the DFW um, Old Republic website a lot for like my net sheets and taxes and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, I was using Fred, but then I thought, well, I'll just use the online one. But Fred has updated tax info and the DFW website does not. It has 2019 still. Okay. And then yeah. on the net sheet, it doesn't have an option for Fort Worth City and Northwest ISD schools. Okay. Just two things I noticed that I don't know if you. No, no, no. We can tell them to update that. So you're saying, I thought it was updated on our website. I'm still getting 2019 taxes. So I went on to Fred and I found the 2020 and just printed it. Yeah. Um, but it's not on the website. And then whenever I do the net sheet on both, it doesn't have city of Fort Worth, Northwest ISD. Okay. It just has like Keller for Fort Worth. It just has like Keller, Eagle Mountain. Okay. Um, I'll definitely look at that. Let me see this too. I want to say, I also looked at property. Are you talking about the property tax rates? Yes. They were not updated. And then I think they went in there and updated them. I just looked yesterday though. Like I was on it last night and it's still 2019 on the website, but Fred is 2020. Yeah. So they did update it on the website, Gina, but I just went and looked and it's 2019 again. So something must have happened. She's right. But look, I'm clicking this one and it's 2020. Hmm. I, hold on. It says unless I'm just not using, I'm doing the old republic title.com slash oh, Texas slash DFW. That's what it is. So on the main screen, Gina, where we have our six like main tabs, that one is 2019. But if you click under resources and go to property tax, then it's the updated one. But we need to oh, yeah, need I'm going to the big one at the top. Yeah, this I'm asking you to Leslie so you can have that save that one, the 2020. Yep. And then how funny, but this one is the right one. This one's the wrong one. Okay. I'm going to send that right now to Keith to fix. 
And I, Rachel, I found it on the app. I ended up just printing it and highlighting the ones I use a lot. Good. But that's where I was like, ah, oh, there is no Fort Worth um, Northwest ISD. Okay, Fort Worth Northwest. Northwest. Got it. We do appreciate you guys show, telling us those type yeah. of things because it is sometimes it's hard to find on our own. Okay, cool. Thank you. Wait. Thank you. Yes. Keep going. Where are you saying Northwest ISD wasn't pulling up? It will pull up if you do. Um, are you talking about? Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. It's on the it's on the 2020. It's not on it's on not on the net sheet. Net okay. Sheet. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So when you do a seller net sheet and then you pull your tax rate, it doesn't give Fort Worth Northwest as an option. So I can I manually put it in there. It's no big deal. But yeah, no, that's good. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Cool guys. Awesome, well, I hope you enjoyed that. Next week, I guess I'm gonna have to make a, some sort of video class. I'll, um, I'll be asking some work, like that's so broad to me. I'm like, where do I even begin? Um, I'll ask for some feedback in the Growing With Goals group, maybe a little survey of what you guys want me to really focus on. If it is YouTube videos, Instagram videos, Facebook videos, just going live, the topics around those, what we can kind of focus on, we'll go over. Um, I'm really gonna go over the our idea factory type things that we will focus on and check off each month what we wanna get done in those. But the idea is the mastermind, we come up with those ideas together and then we can go share those with our sphere that next month as part of our video or marketing campaign. So good. All right, have a great week. We'll talk to you soon. Bye, y'all. Bye. Yeah. Let me not clear this out yet. Stop share. Oh, no. There it is.